Hi, I'm Michelle McLaren. I directed episode 308, Second Sons. Hi, I'm Hannah Murray. I play Gilly. Hello, I'm John Bradley, and I play Samuel Tarley. So you guys, we first met when you came up and we had that rehearsal. Yeah. Which I loved doing. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to do that rehearsal because that end piece is really kind of three scenes that we shot separately. So it was nice to really get a feel of it by rehearsing it all chronologically one scene after the other just to get a full picture of the story of that scene unfolding. And good to see Ross out of costume for once. Yeah, that's right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, and it was, you know, what was really fortunate about that as well is because we were shooting the interior of that little cabin yeah. on stage and then the exterior on location and, of course, out of sequence, when we actually got to the shoot that scene interior, if you guys remember, we ran out of time because of something we'd been shooting earlier that day and we had to shoot it really quickly, which I felt so bad for you guys, but we had rehearsed it and you guys did such a great job that when we got in there you nailed it and and, and it actually went incredibly smoothly with when in a short period of time and uh, and I love I love the scene but I, I I think you guys flew in from London for that rehearsal didn't you yeah we did we we, we flew uh, over specifically for that and it was just one yeah we didn't stay over did we it was just the one day yeah but it's it's one of the things that I found when moving into TV was I was quite taken aback by the lack of uh, rehearsal, like uh, preliminary rehearsal, because I'd done a, a theatre training. So it just always feels more comfortable for me to do a bit of a bit of um, rehearsal prior to getting onto the set, and I think that's why I felt so comfortable in that scene. It's the same when we did the scene in um, season one, where I'm on top of the wall with John, explaining as to why I've come to join the Night's Watch. The reason why I felt so comfortable in that scene was because that was my audition speech. So I'd already ran that scene over and over. So it, it definitely suits my way of working to be able to to have a bit of time to explore it before we start to roll. Well, and I think it was really nice too to be able to work out the interaction with Ross, the you know the White Walker. Yeah. If you remember, we kind of laid out in, inside the tent, uh, or inside that, I think it was a tent that we were rehearsing Yeah, it was it. a tent, that's yeah. right, yeah. A giant tent. We, we used cardboard boxes, and um, it was kind of like kids playing uh, make-believe. But it worked out really yeah. well, <laughs> and, and it helped me, too, to think about the blocking and how we were going to lay it out. And we, I don't, we hadn't even found our location yet, so when we were scouting for locations, I kept thinking about that day and, and how it felt for us, you know, and how we laid it out, because I really liked how it how it kind of came together and when you guys got to the actual location when we finally shot it did did it seem similar to what we had laid out in that little tent that day yeah it seemed to but the main difference was when when we rehearsed it with with Ross Ross was dressed as Ross Ross yeah. Ross didn't have his obviously didn't have his his prosthetic on so it was harder to kill Ross yeah <laughs> much harder to kill Ross than it would be to kill the white walker but, but I always find that when once you go onto the location, it just adds so much to your performance, especially because we shoot in in kind of quote unquote natural locations. When you see, I mean, all this stuff, which looks like a an advert for the tourism board of Northern Ireland, it, it, it looks <laughs> it it it's so real. You can't fake those trees. This isn't on a green screen. So once you get in touch with natural elements and and the smells and the textures underfoot of of, of a forest or of a desert. You just find that it really kicks you into more of a performance than it would be. Even though I value rehearsal, there's nothing like getting onto the location and and immersing yourself in it. I also think because our costumes are so kind of elaborate and so such an important part of. I think they change. Like I think both of us are so kind of physically transformed by them as well, and like the way we walk and everything. It feels very very weird to be playing those characters in like jeans and t-shirts. It doesn't seem to kind of. Yeah. It feels yeah. It feels very much like kids playing pretend whereas right. once you put all that stuff on you suddenly start to really believe it all and i've got to keep in the back of my mind even though i'm obviously not the swiftest in real life if i'm planning a, a journey from a to b it's going to be significantly slower in costume <laughs> well i would imagine <laughs> your cloak is so heavy i was so gonna say yeah, yeah everything you're wearing is so heavy but both of you too i mean hannah you're you've got it seems to me like you had a lot of layers on 
Oh, I've, yeah, I've got about eight layers on. But let's be honest, there's less of Hannah to start with. But <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little you, bit. You'll see when we get to the when we get to the the very very end shot. I'm appearing to not be running as fast as I thought I was on the day. I thought you might have to slow this image down a bit here, Michelle, because I'm just going to be a blur <laughs> trekking past this camera. Turns out you see me coming for miles and miles. Oh, look, there's Jacob. There's Jacob. I haven't seen him yet. This is actually... IMD yeah, I used yeah. to share a flat with Jacob. Bit of trivia for everyone. Oh, you're I kidding. was living with him when he got... Yeah, I was living with him when he got the part. It was really sweet. He um, Because he got really angry with me when I was in the show because he loved the first series so much. And he was like, you ruined it for me. I can't believe in it anymore. If I know one of my friends is in it, it ruins the fantasy. And then he texted me and was like, I got it. I ruined it for myself too. <laughs> and he was, yeah, he was, I was, I was so adamant as soon as he had the audition that I just knew he was going to get it because he's so brilliant. He and is. he was like, there's no way I'm going to get it. He was like, the audition was terrible. I'm never going to get it. And he's obviously fantastic. But yeah, um, we don't live together anymore, but we used to share a flat. Oh my gosh, good. And we went, to, and we went to the same school. Bit of extra, even more trivia for you. He was in the year below me. <laughs> Very Bristol. cool trivia. This stuff was all shot in um, in Morocco, and, uh, yeah. and and Jacob is wonderful. You know, he's he's great to work with. And and just uh, that scene that we just shot, um, the Selsor camp, that was at Abenadou, and where they shot pieces of the Gladiator, and um, oh gosh, uh, I can't remember the other movie, but um, it was really fun to be in in uh, in a place that. Um, uh, you know, other films have been shot, but uh, but it, but it's also absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And of course, the the city itself was all was all CG. But you guys don't get to see this world. No, uh, you know, not uh, not at all. Not at all. No, yeah. I'm actually going on holiday tomorrow to Croatia. I feel like I'm trying to make up for it. <laughs> Are you going go to go to Dubrovnik to go to the hot places? Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. My kind of official party line on it is: if it looks nice. I'm not going to turn up. <laughs> we were just talking earlier, though, about how much we like Belfast. So yeah, we let's do. Let's not be. Oh yeah. Well, when I say nice, ungrateful. I don't mean objectively nice. I mean weather. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, Belfast is great. When I first read the the scene that that we did, I thought you know it was it was all snow. I thought we were going to shoot that in Iceland. And I was really surprised yeah. when I found out that we were shooting it outside of Belfast and absolutely blown away with the um, with the special effects guys that created all that, that snow. But I did wonder. I thought, yeah. Yeah, is this, is this going to look good? You know, I don't know. And I, I, I thought it looked amazing. I mean, it blew my mind. What yeah, the, yeah, the fake snow I find so amazing because it makes you feel cold just to look at it. It's such a... It's such an such an amazing thing that it just plays tricks on your mind. It, it's so true. Which it which feels funny that we're talking about that right now because of course this was so hot in um, in Morocco. Hey, yeah, how hot was it? It was really hot, and although there was a nice breeze that would come up, but these guys were in these huge costumes. I mean, look what the men are wearing, and they've got the armor yeah. and, and everything, and uh, and and they're wearing wigs, and it was it was extremely hot. And there's a lo you know you see a lot of the soldiers in the background. Same thing. There was, I think we had you know a couple hundred extras uh, in, whenever we're wow. outside of the of the tent in the in the camp. It was beautiful, stunningly beautiful. But it it is you know it's a different a different temperature that you're dealing with uh, there. I I I adore this uh, specific scene. I think it's great to show Amelia playing the character with so much poise. And just so much grace and elegance dealing with the... I mean, if people say that the Game of Thrones attitude to women is not one that's particularly favourable, then you should have a look at this scene, really, because these three are so unpleasant. And Danny just comes across as infinitely so superior to these guys. I, I, you've, you've said that brilliantly. I couldn't agree more. And she has such fun with it. And yeah. uh, she's so superior. She's so powerful. And manipulative, too, as, as she needs yeah. to be, you know, which is, which is, which is great. And she's able to, because she is genuine, she does have this confidence coursing through her. She's able to, to play with them almost in quite a... In, in quite a um, she can be very conservative with the small C, with the power, but she doesn't need to shout or scream. She's already set herself up status-wise as so far above them, it's untrue. Yes, exactly. No, I, c I couldn't agree more. And that, what we just saw, was also shot in um, Ireland, actually. I forget the name of the beach, but it's it's about an hour from from Belfast and beautiful. Yeah. I actually wouldn't be surprised if somebody thought it was Croatia, but of course the Irish coastline is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's amazing how varied the um, 
the different locations you can get in Northern Ireland are. Like you'd never, you know, it's it's all like about an hour tops out of, side of Belfast and you can get so many different things. I'll come visit you soon. I agree. Yeah, the variety is amazing. And when I first started scouting for all these different locations, it blew my mind. Because, and it's it's a good thing because, of course, we are playing, finding so many locations that represent different parts of the world of Westeros. You know, we're in so many different areas that have to be north of the wall, south of the wall, and further south of the wall. And and obviously, we you know go to Croatia and we go to Morocco and we go to Iceland and these different places. But a lot of the stuff that that people think are maybe shot in some of those areas are actually shot in Ireland. Yeah, that's right. I just find it so impressive that because we shoot in Belfast, Iceland, and then Morocco, and then I think maybe one or two tiny pieces done in the States as well, we can actually say that we shoot this on three continents. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Which, which, which not many shows can well, say. Well, I mean, isn't it the only show that shoots in several different countries as like a kind of standard thing? I mean, obviously there are other shows that will, they'll go to somewhere else for like for one episode or for one special thing but that to just kind of be so international as like just like that's how it operates oh, maybe. I that's think is true. yeah I can't I don't know of any other show that does do that I shot actually two days in Los Angeles with the bear which was originally oh did you do the bear I did yeah amazing it was amazing and that was originally in this episode but it actually got moved to the previous episode, and you guys were... The White Walker was in the previous episode, got moved to this episode. That's correct, yeah. 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 So they, they moved it around um, editorially. Yeah, but I remember asking Gwen, I was like, how are you going to how are you gonna do the bear? Like, I thought it was going to be some sort of special trick, and she was like, it's just going to be yeah. a bear. It's going to fight a bear. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Simple as that. No need to overcomplicate it. Just fight a bear, for God's sake. <laughs> well, you know, she's willing. She's she's enthusiastic. She'll do anything for Wasn't her bear. I bet the bear was terrified. But didn't the bear, have to get, the bear had to get used to the dress? Like, she had to be fitted for the dress ages in advance. So the bear wouldn't be freaked out by it. You know what? You're absolutely right, Hannah. I forgot about that. The uh, we had to I'm pick the dress, and and Michelle, the costume designer, did an amazing job with designing it way ahead of time. And then they right. sent one of them over to Utah, where the bear was in, in North America. And the trainer would work with the bear no, with the dress on. And the trainer's a man, about the same height as as, <laughs> as Brienne. Yeah, no, it's, that's pretty funny. I'm sure they've got. Hopefully, they recorded some of that. But. Uh, <laughs> But yes, that's that's very true. They had to, to work with the um, the dress and the wooden sword and anything that the bear was was going to be around. Wow. So you agree, I'm not a lettered man, but is there a difference between kill and sacrifice? The boy's your nephew. What of it? We're at war. Why should I spare this? This particular scene, gosh, these guys are such great actors. All of you guys. We were talking about it in the uh, previous um, commentary. What a treat it is to work with such wonderfully trained actors. And, and John, I want you to tell the story of how you got the part. Do you want to tell that story? Yeah, I mean, I'm forever in debt to the people at my drama school because we were in uh, rehearsals for our final third year show. And, uh, and I, I came in one day and I had the, I'd been waiting for all year to play a lead part and I'd finally got the lead part in this final show. And I had to come in one day and just say, do you mind if I... Uh, leave rehearsals for a day to go and audition for this thing and and they I mean they didn't really didn't have to do it and looking back now if they hadn't have let me out then my life would have taken a completely different turn but just got to show you about your career is based on the grace and favour of certain individuals and, and, and without them just things just wouldn't happen oh my gosh I got that story totally wrong Oh no! I swear never to raise your hand to the lady Mary. I, in my memory, you, they wouldn't let you out, <laughs> and then oh. you said you were sick and left. I, I, I don't know where I made that whole thing up. I will tell you something. It, That's it, a much better story. It's a much. Oh yeah, thanks, H. <laughs> but I tell you, you know, it, if I was to admit to doing something as radical as that, then people at my drama school are going to be ringing me up saying you are nowhere near as brave as that. <laughs> As if you do something they didn't tell you to do. I'm coming across as some kind of Rob Roy figure. But weren't you nearly really late for it? Didn't you have like a problem with the trains and you were like an hour and a half late for your Yeah, final? don't try and salvage the anecdote. Age. No, but wasn't that, isn't that what happened? Were <laughs> you telling me some awful thing about being told to like, being told you like had to get a taxi and you were like running across London and I yeah. thought it was all very like, it, it, yeah, it, I remember some drama around this. <laughs> oh yeah, there was, there was certainly drama. There was drama every single second of my life. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, it, uh, admittedly, Ace, that was more of a story that I'd just tell you. Okay. And not tell <laughs> loads of people. Do you, do you tell a lot of people that you did, like... I tell a lot Pretend of people, to be sick and you just like... I tell a lot of people that they said... Knock sorry, stuff over on the way out sorry, and John, never coming back. Sorry, John, we can't let you out. And I said, no way. <laughs> I saw it. Don't think so. <laughs> and you saw it. Oh, dear. She gave <laughs> I never believed, but when you see the truth, when it's right there in front of you... I find it really funny how people always talk about the... People always, the directors on this particularly, always talk about British actors and the training, and it's so great. And and I don't have one. And, um, but people have told me that as a British actor in America, you can just, you just don't mention it, and they'll always assume that you have trained, because that's what we're kind of known for. But do you say you you, you haven't had any? I know training? I haven't had any training. I haven't had any training. And I mean, like you know, like Jacob hasn't, Joe Dempsey hasn't. Like there's there's kind of. Um, quite a lot of us that are just like getting by on, on luck, but um, but yeah, I do think I do think it's I really admire it in other people. Tell him, is there any place that my cock can't reach? She'll tell me whatever you pay her to tell me. This is what people are getting up to while we're in Iceland. Look at this fella yes. he's having the time of his life. <laughs> Look at this. The only thing that immediately rests on my knee when I sit down is my stomach. Fight for beauty. <laughs> for beauty. Well, yes, we had, the, these guys were enjoying themselves. We had we had some fun shooting this scene. This is the, this is the cell swords camp, and again, this is back at A Benadou, where they shot part of uh, the Gladiator. I think this might be where they built the arena, but I could have that wrong. Right. Apparently, I'm getting my stories wrong today. Um, but uh, <laughs> but this was a fun scene to shoot. A lot of extras, a lot of horses, and these three guys who were just wonderful. One of us slips into our camp, pass her on This guy in particular, he is, of course, going to survive, but these other two guys are going to go. Yeah. This guy's quite a pig. You know, yeah, his, just his, so... His, his character. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. <laughs> They just ooze a kind of macho, bravado, unpleasantness. Three coins. He's just dying for something really awful to happen. I mean, it's amazing that... that as we were talking before about the kind of natural environment, how you get all these beautiful colours in a place like this, and in and in Belfast, and in Iceland, and everywhere you go. So there's no way that you can confuse or conflate these stories because they're all visually so kind of unique. They are. And, and for example, that town that you see behind them, that's real. 99% of the time nowadays, you'd have to CG something like that yeah. if you were shooting a show in Ireland because you're not going to be able to afford to go to Morocco. So it's really a treat to get to shoot in these places. And the art department does an amazing job because this was just a... Yes. an empty dirt back lot of this town and they came in and they built that whole camp and it's really fun to go there and see the before and after and it just comes to life yeah and of course now here we're back on our stages in belfast it's hard to believe that isn't it, it just all in a psychological way just works geographically you'd never believe So then you guys don't have a lot of interaction with certain of the actors, do you? I mean, there's there's many of them you may not have even met. Or do you meet them at publicity and things? I mean, quite often because so many people are around in Belfast at the same time. Because, I mean, we're always shooting. I mean, we had three units at one point all in Belfast at the same time. So there were so many people. And you always, because you always kind of see people in the bar or, you know, yeah. kind of run into the, or run into them on set when, like, they've... They're on their way back, and you're arriving, or something like that. And yeah, and then I guess when we do press, but it is weird to think that there are, you know, there's so many incredible people in the show, and a lot of them you'll never actually get to work yeah. with, which is sad. I mean, this King's Landing is a much bigger and much more populated world than some of the. I mean, when when we're shooting Beyond the World stuff, it's a very very small group of actors, really. Yeah, isn't well, I mean, it? we were. I mean, for the bulk of. Series three, it was just me and you for most of it. That's right. We? Yeah. And then we ran into a couple of other people at the end. Yeah. But, um, but if you consider King's Landing, there's so many characters. You've got yeah. The, you've got the uh, you know Tywin and everybody and, and Sandra, and then the then the Tyrells might come in for a bit and intertwine with those. It doesn't feel as well, it's not as isolated in the story, but it just, just doesn't feel as isolated a unit as we feel we are when we're shooting. You're right. Yeah, that's true. These guys are getting ready to go to the wedding. Yeah. And in the wedding scene, we had 
just about everybody who plays in King's Landing at the wedding. We had a huge cast at the Thanks. wedding, and it was and it was fun. It was a lot of fun to have everybody in in um, one room, and a lot of people to cover. <laughs> so yeah. it took a lot of time. It's just all so great that stuff. Do you drink wine? But when so, if you to. guys, you so see, you guys have you've, you've met Peter, I would imagine, yeah. and Sophie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've met these guys. I, I, this relationship is just so gorgeous. I think it's. it's yeah, I think it's so beautifully written. It's yeah, beautifully written. I love the relationship and I love the chemistry. He can be so gracious. Yeah. You're a musical girl, aren't you? This is a Septa Baylor, and just a, an interesting note for people is that this was. I don't know if you guys ever went on this stage, but we only had about uh, a third, two to a half of this set built, and then the rest of it is all. CG and there's no ceiling on it and uh, there's no actual statues on the pillars. Those are, those are all CG and there's only one side of, of the set. Wow. So everything had to be shot. Um, you, you'd, you'd shoot uh, looking one way but because it's a mirror image of each other all the way around you would then reverse all the, the actors and the, and the extras as you'll see coming up and, um, and then shoot the reverse as if you were looking across to one another. Wow. So it was it was uh, logistically a challenge, and so we we did a pre visualization with it, which is I sat with a um, pre vis guy on a computer, and they input the set, and uh, we put the characters in, and then we were able to place the camera. You know, I could say, okay, you know, go up 50 feet here and try 65 mil lens, and we could see what it looked like and, and adjust it. So then when we got there on the day, we knew exactly what shots were going to be uh, set extension for, for CG and what, what lenses we'd use and where the camera would go. It all had to be planned in advance because this set, you're, you're, not, you haven't, you're not seeing it yet, you're about to see it, but this set was just a small piece of pie and we had to create, of course, the, the, the whole pie, <laughs> Wow. so to speak. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. To find out that kind of thing. It was challenging. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's going to be... I mean, from, I didn't know that. And that's going to be one of those things that you can't unknow now. Every time you see that that's again, true. you're going to have that on your mind. And it's just, just absolutely magic, the way it all fits together. It is. So when you're looking through these doors, that ceiling, you were looking up at, at the stage ceiling and, and rigging and everything. That didn't, that didn't exist. Unbelievable. And what Peter's standing on now is a camera platform looking across. <laughs> and then now... When you look back at him, he's actually standing where she just was. Oh my God! So it was, yeah. It's it's logistically, um, it was it was very challenging. There was a few of us that shot in there, and um, your father's gone. As the it was one of those things away. where you shoot it and you think, oh God, I hope this is going to cut together. But uh, thankfully, thankfully it did. And when you're there's a a high shot that's about to come up. You know, again, that's you're looking at the CG ceiling there. We're just, you know, on scaffolding out the door. Wow. And then this, those That's statues incredible. on either side and the right and the left, that didn't, that didn't exist. And that whole, if you think of this, only half of that set exists. Yeah. So everything else is CG. Absolutely Looking up at them, unbelievable. Yeah, that didn't exist. And here we have all the members of, of King's Landing. Yeah, I love this shot. And the wardrobe, oh my gosh. We, the wardrobe on this show is is incredible. I mean, you look at your wardrobe, you look at their wardrobe, and everything is hand-stitched. Yeah, I the know. detail is so incredible, so incredible. It helps you play the part. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so much. This little piece here just gets you into Joffrey's psychology so emphatically just this little thing with this I mean look at that it's terrifying that moment because you realize just just how much of a child he is and he's, he's got a kind of that cruel petulant thing but placed in a position of absolute authority I still can't get over Jack like he's because he's so lovely and sweet and he's like really softly spoken yeah. and just like and then because I'd met him after having like watched his performance and I couldn't you I can't put the two things together it just it's baffling that someone can 
like I don't know perform that kind of like access that kind of evil yeah. and then be just like the sweetest nicest boy it's almost like Jack's method is to work out everything he does and then do the exact opposite of it yeah. on the show <laughs> and he is um, he must be a professor yeah, so he doesn't I even want, he doesn't even want to be an actor. I was I was telling yeah. him how great he thought I was I he uh, I thought he was, and he was like, oh, that makes me feel really kind of weird because I don't really want to do it. <laughs> your grace, your grace, my lords, my ladies, we stand here in the sight of gods and men. And Peter Dinklage, oh my gosh. What can you say about Peter Dinklage? It's not been said. Yeah, just one of the most wonderful people on the planet. Yeah, performs and, and every single second that he's on every single frame of Peter on screen is a performance is this what I think it is is this the scene oh it might very well be <laughs> is this the leeches brace yourself for this yeah. it is it is the leeches have you ever seen one like it how's he doing He's good. He's really, really good. He's uh, just he's about recovered from this. Just about recovered from this. <laughs> I was yeah. say, have the scars healed? <laughs> yeah, and he's in a play at the moment. I went to see it last night. He's brilliant in it. But um, oh great! Yeah, he's doing really well. Well, Joe and and Carice did an amazing, amazing job with this scene. I've heard and, so uh, much about this scene, and I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to give us your take on it. it. You know, it was interesting prepping for this scene because because of the leeches. Because they were um, real. They were real leeches, weren't they? They were real leeches. They were medical leeches. So uh -huh. the first leeches they brought were so tiny you could barely see them. And and we said, no, no, no. We need, you know we need bigger leeches. So they the the um, animal guys brought in some medical leeches, which um, were are very big, which are the traditional leeches that we usually see in in movies and are completely and utterly disgusting. And um, so I talked to you know to Joe and I said, "How do you feel about having these on you?" And he was he was fine with it. We did put some Vaseline, some type of concoction, on his chest, so hopefully they wouldn't uh, stick. But sometimes they did, and um, and so there's some you know moments where we would pull the leeches off and there'd be blood. Uh, but a lot of the time, and we also had fake leeches as well. And so we'd we'd put the real leeches on so we could get the squirming and everything, and hopefully they wouldn't latch on. And then we'd freeze and have the the fake leeches uh, replaced. And I did not have them. There's there's one shot coming up where they they drop a leech in his crotch, and I I didn't do that with the real leech. I didn't do that to Joe. <laughs> I'm not so sure he would have let me. <laughs> but uh, but I think they work out. He was such a good sport about it. I mean, and there was a couple of times where a leech would roll off, and we didn't know where it went. And he of course is tied up. Oh so we're going, where, where's the leech? And he stayed very calm. <laughs> he was a good sport about it. Did you know Joe ahead of time? I've that? known Joe since I was 17, yeah. We did, uh, it was my first job uh, with Skins with him. And uh, we're, you know, we're still really, really good friends. I see him a lot in London. So It was so nice that he was the first person I called when I got the part to tell him. Um, was, yeah, and it was so... I mean, I, I think, again, like we'll never work together on this but it's so nice to be around in Belfast with him I feel I, I love that about this show that you're just like, it's such a wonderful group of people and the cast just ke it keeps sort of like series three Jacob joined and Ellie Kendrick joined who's another really good friend of mine and we went to university together and it was just this wonderful thing of just like all your favorite people sort of end up in Belfast it's lovely I feel like in the end every British actor will have been in Game of Thrones because there's just that many characters it's so huge. Well, and, and also you guys, because it's so huge and such a big cast, you don't work every day, so you probably have a fair amount of downtime in Belfast where you can actually hang out. Yeah, we do. We seem to in season three, didn't we? Yeah, in season three we did. I mean, sometimes obviously you have so much downtime that you just go home and you're not in Belfast. But we had a good, we had a good, we had a weekend. Yeah. Yeah, we were the only two people in our, Belfast. Our glorious lost weekend. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> just like wandering around <laughs> CD shops. Because I'm a bit of an early riser when it comes to uh, getting up and, and starting to meet people. So often you'd turn your phone on and there'd be about 10 texts from me going, you up yet? You yeah. Up yet? <laughs> Chronically bored, you up yet? Waiting for your room to be cleaned. <laughs> anyway, don't change the subject, eh? Watch a good friend of yours get okay. a load of blood sucked out of him. Go on. Come fight death with me. 
Joe did a great job here because he had to play somewhat inexperienced as far as being seduced by, you know, this woman. But of course, be a man. Yeah. And he's not, you know, completely utterly inexperienced. But he's just he's in over his head in this atmosphere, you know, with all this wealth and That's right, yeah. and the seduction and everything and. Uh, he did, he did a great job with, with, with playing that. I mean, he's just been told that he's the son of the king and he's, you know, been brought to this incredible castle. And I, I can imagine that it's somewhat overwhelming. But then, of course, animal instinct takes over. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's interesting to see because uh, this performance kind of links in with Liam Cunningham's performance before when he's, when he's uh, teaching himself how to read, just in terms mm -hmm. of... Uh, not really knowing what you're doing, and feel, but most when pe most people learn how to read their children, so they don't have that judgment upon themselves. But it's interesting to, to see people go into uncharted territory and feel a little bit exposed by it. I think that's always a fascinating thing to see. And it's really brave too. And yeah, I don't exactly. mean just about the leeches. I mean about exposing <laughs> yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. But these are real leeches. Yes. That one's a fake one. <laughs> that one's real. We didn't drop it on. That's fake. We should say this says that no Joe Dempsey's were harmed in the making of this. <laughs> Not a single one. You can blame Sir Davos. <laughs> he didn't believe in the power of King's blood. He wanted a demonstration. What a moment to walk in on. Please. Yeah, I know. Please, Give us five minutes, will you, pal? <laughs> that's one, that's the, I think probably one of the very cast members I've never met up in, uh, the point recording this is Stephen Delane. Oh, he's the, that that scene that we were talking about earlier with Liam and Steve and they, yeah. these guys, they're just spectacular. Absolute pros, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable pros. That's what that's when when you know you talk about the classically trained and just just by also experience. I mean, these guys have been doing it for a long time, and it's such a treat. Um, well, it's it's a treat working with you guys. It's a treat working with this entire cast. And then these, um, of course, are, are fake. No leeches were hurt during the filming of this show. <laughs> we ha we actually had the leeches on a stick. Sounds like a, a dessert. Um, and there was a, a <laughs> there was a, a pole uh, underneath through the fire so that this, the leeches were wiggled. And then CG took. You actually didn't take them out of that shot. If you look really closely, you can see them. And now, oh my gosh, Peter is just. He's magical in this bit, isn't he? Yeah. He is. Oh, I laughed so much shooting this. And uh, no, he wasn't really drunk. That's the good... Uh, Diana Rigg. Oh, well. She's I couldn't believe it when I heard that she was cast. It was so exciting. She is, she, is, uh, she is amazing. When we were shooting the wedding scene, I was up on the camera platform and I'd have to run downstairs to, to give notes. And uh, so I called them out to some people because there was a lot of running up and down. But I just couldn't bring myself to yell down to Dame you know, Diana Rigg. And, and so I kept running up and down the stairs and running up and down the stairs as we were changing things around and everything. And finally, one of the camera operators yelled out, Hey, Diana, can you? She's like, Yeah, no problem. And I thought, Okay, great. <laughs> We get a little less formal here, but she is she's such a sport. She is she, she's wonderful, and Charles Dance. I mean, she, she, these these guys are just amazing. The great thing about Peter in this is uh, an actor that's able to offer or willing to completely leave any kind of vanity at the door. I mean, Peter's Peter's a good-looking fella, but he knows that when you are drunk and when you are a bit out of control, you can contort yourself and become quite an unpleasant mm -hmm. thing to look at. If you just see him in You're this, right. he, yeah. he's just acting to his very—he's acting drunk to his very fingertips. Yeah, and he's—he's yeah, he's not, he's not afraid exactly, to go yeah. there. As a result, though, of, I mean, this was a long scene to shoot. It's a very big scene, and he was actually drinking that. It, it's tea, I believe. He asked for a, a special concoction. I think it's um, cherry tea or something. Right. So we'd have to have pee breaks for Peter because <laughs> the poor guy was drinking so much. We have to, you know, you'd, you'd, have, you'd have to run off. Understandably. But he's just, he's just brilliant in this and so courageous. Your wife needs a child, a Lannister child. There's so many great scenes between these two this season. Charles yeah. and Peter. What did you once call me? A drunken little lust I, I would imagine as, as an actor when you, when you get to, to be in a scene with somebody, um, 
who's your equal or maybe has more experience or whatever but it but bring you both can bring each other's game up yeah that oh, yes, there's um, nothing quite like it as you guys do for each other i'm sure well what i think is really nice about us actually is that we've worked together so much now i think we have a really really kind of it's been really interesting for me to kind of develop a working relationship with someone over such a long period of time and I'm always kind of excited to go back to it because I think like yeah. it's I think we work together so well and I think because we know each other as actors so, and we, we I think we we've talked about it a lot like we think how we work in we have slightly different approaches but kind of with the same end result yeah it, it's amazing how, how we can go two different routes to end up in more or less the same yeah and because obviously yeah because obviously John trained and I didn't so that, I think that makes our attitude to things slightly different but then we I think we actually have quite a similar style which I think is why we do work well together and we have our little do, do you guys disagreements pre- as well sometimes oh we certainly do, do yeah. yeah 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 we do <laughs> we, we, we had a disagreement oh we had a just before shooting the the internal scene of this episode yeah we had it we had a little like we had it out and i won no you didn't win i i what? i caved in yeah yeah so I mean, a little bit what was the disagreement about it was just a there was just a little tiny thing about i wanted to <laughs> as is always my way I wanted to add just the tiniest little comic flourish to the line and you weren't having any of it, were you? I wasn't right? having it, no. Just wasn't having any of it. I still think it would have been a nice little touch, actually. No, because it... Do you remember I, I, what the line was? Yeah. There's a line where... Oh, God. It, well, we're actually doing it now, H. Who's <laughs> <he's> ultimately won? <laughs> to me, isn't it? Uh, there's a line where I think he says, uh, have you thought of a name yet? And then I said, really the line is, it would be easy to refer to him if he had a name. Yeah. But I wanted to play that line, a little thing in it, that he still didn't know how to refer to him, even when he was saying that. To go, uh, it would be easy to refer to <laughs> him if he had a name. Yeah, but the thing was, because my next line was such a, like, it came in so hard. It was just, because I'm angry with you and I snap at you the next thing. Yeah. For me, it felt like you when you gave that pause, I would have just jumped in then. And it was really, it felt... Really, and I just, I just thought you were just, you were just, just being, you know. Just yeah, but my suggestion was so complicating. My suggestion yeah. was that you, you could have used his overthought and overthinking and timidity to get you even more frustrated with it. Well, I was frustrated. Maybe it would have worked. Frustra- I was frustrated. You're frustrated with me. <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, I'm going to play the fifth because we already shot the scene and it's awesome. So I can say you're both right. <laughs> yeah, we'll never know. We'll no, it's <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a great scene though, and it, and it, and that's a great moment. I, I think because you guys have done so much together, the chemistry between you is is great off camera and it shows on camera. And you know, because of course there's a potential budding romance here, and it's so sweet and it's so innocent. You know, especially on on Samwell's part. But then intellectually, you're more educated, so there's an innocence on Gilly's part you, you've kind of rescued each other and that is that's really sweet and romantic and I think that really comes across when you're picking up the wood and Sam's holding the baby and then you reverse the roles when the white walker comes and Sam has to rescue you and stab him in the back I mean it's it, it's interesting to see that you guys have really become a couple but but it is my wedding night my tiny junk cock and I have a job to do. Come, wife. Yeah. yeah, well, what I really like is the idea that they're like a family. They're like this little kind of family unit. And it's the most dysfunctional family ever because it's her dad's baby. And he's sort of got no connection at all. You know, it's just kind of like this random guy that kind of happened. Yeah. Yeah, but then actually there's so much love between the three of them and this bond is so strong and also I think there's actually a lot of comedy in this kind of weird yeah. domesticity of it as well and I think I, I, think, I agree yeah. I, I think their love really flourishes as well this season I think that I think Dolores Head has a line in season two where he says the reason you like Gilly so much is because she said three words to you or something yeah. which is basically saying that Sam has got such kind of He's got a, um, attachment issues. I think I think he's definitely got attachment issues. Anybody who's had psychologically and emotionally scarring childhood is bound to have some kind of attachment issues. And Dolores Head thinks it's just that. And Sam, if, if Sam was talking to the girl who was standing directly next to Gilly, instead of Gilly, he'd still be forming this attachment. And I think that 
as as this series goes on, we realise that Gilly is very, very special to Sam, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he like he 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 likes her personally, and he and he likes he just he, there's it's, you know, to kind of phrase there's something about her that he likes. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it, one one of my favorite oh, no. moments, and I love the whole scene in the cabin. But one of my favorite moments is when you guys are picking a name, and um, and you say, "Please don't call him Randall." Talk and she know. thinks about it. You know, you 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 take your time with it, and then you go, "Well, not Randall then." And it's and you're so pleased that somebody has, has taken your me. side. You're so, so you, that somebody cares enough. To think about your feelings, and you guys both play that so well because Gilly, Hannah, you you say it so innocently, like so well because you care for this guy. Okay, of course not, Randall, and and you can see John, your reaction to it is you are so touched, and it's to me it's just one of those moments where again they're falling in love. And I, I think a, a beautiful a, a thing that's only just occurred to me just now talking about it. Sam didn't want Gilly to call the baby Craster either. Yeah. I mean, that's yes. the first name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Suggest- I mean, that's, yeah, that's what I kind Absolutely. of love Absolutely. Gilly yeah. even suggests, suggests Craster as a name. Just because, well, that's what mm-hmm. I, I mean, we, I, mean, I actually found that scene so, I, I knew, because jo- I find John so, f- there's, you're so funny. And, but you're so good at making lines that I didn't think were going to be funny, funny. And so when I first read that scene, it's just that list of names. You just think it's a list of names. And then I had so much trouble. <laughs> not like you, like you managed to make just listing some names. So hilarious. And then, yeah, I remember you pointed out that it was like, when I say Craster, it's like the most inappropriate name yeah, yeah. for the baby to be called. <laughs> but it's just like she wants to join in. And he's yeah. like, he's, right. she's like, I know a name. <laughs> I right. know a name as well. She doesn't She doesn't know any boys' names except Craster and yeah. Mormon. Yeah, <laughs> Mormon. I love Mormon. I love, yeah, I love It's that. just so sweet. Oh, God. yeah, I love that scene so much. And uh, I, 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 think, I think that the, so reason, the reason why Sam says to Gilly, don't call him Craster, is because he know how much it had hurt him. For the baby to be called, yeah, Randall. He's got he's got an unbelievable uh, uh, empathy about him with other people. Oh, that's one so. of the biggest things they have in common, isn't yes. it? Is the father they both had such yeah. horrific father figures. That's right. Yeah. yeah look absolutely. at this. Look at Sophie. She's incredible. I think she's so brilliant. She is. She's amazing. So like so unusual of the way she says everything, and it's just really, really wonderful. She's really got that character, and just her emotional command as well. I mean, she, I mean, she's got to really... I mean, a lot of people do, but she's got to really plunder the depths of very deep emotion in this. And for a, for a, well, a, a young actress to pull it off so well is just an extraordinary feat. Exactly. And when she started, she was very young. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and she's had to, in, in the story, as well as, as, you know, herself as an actress, has had to mature so much. Yeah. But still keep that youthful innocence about her. She, yeah. she does it really well. Now we're back in in Morocco. We're so blessed with the with the younger actors on this show. They've all got a, a maturity to them, combined with with all the naivety that they need to play children, and yet combined with an incredible um, a professional maturity. We just completely looked out with everybody. Yeah, I, I agree. You're absolutely right. They're all they're all such a pleasure to work, to work with and so talented. Yeah. And then we've got Amelia, who, of course, is wonderful. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. How can anyone speak 19 languages? It only took your grace a year to learn Dothraki reasonably now. Yes, well... And this we actually shot inside a stage in Morocco. We were going to shoot it on location in the tent, and a big storm was coming. And so they moved the tent onto a stage, which which ended up being much better uh, just for controlling the environment and everything, because we'd never see... We we don't see outside the tent now because of yeah it being on stage. We we did put some some firelight out there and just so you get a sense of it. But it's it's not part of the you know it's not necessary to the to the scene. But um, they actually have stages there that we we at the last minute moved to. Oh, you see now because because I'm second guessing. I just automatically assumed this was Belfast because it's interior. You just slung a spanner in the works there, so <laughs> I don't know where I am. Gods could not devise a more perfect. And Natalie, who plays Masandai, she's a wonderful actress as well. And she's I, great, yeah. Yeah, I love the, the, the play between these two. It's really great. Oh, here we go. It's always when you get in the bath, isn't it? 
<laughs> this is our take on that whole thing about as soon as you get in the bath, the phone rings. In this, as soon as you plant yourself in the bath, second son comes in with a knife ready to whip your translator's head off. Oh. This is Dario, played by the gorgeous Ed. I think Ed is a hip hop artist. Yeah, Dave, I was talking to Dave and Dan about this the other day. They said that, they said, yeah, that they, they watched YouTube videos of him when he was auditioning and, yeah. and he's brilliant. He's one of those actors. Me and Hannah have these conversations about actors that have got great faces. You know, great faces for parts and faces that really yeah, come really, out really off the really screen. Faces, and he's got like such an interesting face and such an interesting aura about him. Why? We had. It's funny because, of course, that's a wig he's wearing. And so uh, when I first saw him, he had the wig on. And. I saw him hanging out at the pool the next day, and I almost didn't recognize him at first because he hardly has any hair. Yeah. Not because he's bald. He just had it really, really short. And, um, and I, I, it took me a, a double take to figure out who it was. He's got incredible features, and the camera loves him. And those heads were built by our wonderful prosthetics people, and they took casts of the other two actors. And I thought, I thought they did a great job. It was, it was uh, kind of fun seeing those. And yeah. it was a little, I think the actors themselves saw them. They thought they were a little freaked out by that, too. <laughs> Have you guys met uh, George R. R. Martin? Yeah, I've met him a few times. Have you? Okay. I, I, I haven't met him, no. He's an extraordinary man. I always say he's the, he's the, he's the nicest genius you'll ever meet. <laughs> Have you, Michelle? Have you I haven't, George? but I, I just did the uh, commentary beforehand with him. Oh, of course, that yeah. Was, that was really fun. It's such a luxury to have George still, you know, still there to go to with any questions, I think. And he's just so open and receptive to any problems that we might encounter. He's, he's just, I mean, if you get an adaptation from book to screen, especially something as epic as this and such a world unto itself, to have the head that all this stuff came out of there and willing to answer any question, it just gives you so much of a foundation to stand on. It's pretty amazing. Have you guys read the books? Yeah, I've just about finished them now. I read them as we do each series. So I read, so like I read the second up to the second book before series two, and then I read the third one before series three. Yeah. So I'll, I better start reading book four. See, I started doing that. Then I just realised that I was just showing unnecessary levels of restraint and and punishing myself. And I've decided to, I just decided to go for it one day. I, I thought that, but having said that, I've I've left out some, well, most actually, Samwell chapters in the future books. Oh, really? Because you don't, you don't want to be influenced? You want to... Oh, no, you guys, this was a plate shot. Yeah. And then we, you know, shot... You walk against green screen and, and stuck that in. And this is, uh, for, the, for the people listening, this is all fake snow. This is in, yeah. in Ireland. This is normally green and brown. And this was Ireland in, this, August, yeah, in August or August. something. <laughs> in August, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And this is our weirwood tree, um, which was created by the art department. I, this is amazing. Unbelievable. Uh, that, yeah. that face was, was fantastic. Nearly smashed my face off them planks a few times. Oh, same. <laughs> I am doing And what about this crow? <laughs> oh, yeah. This crow landed. With, this is not a CG crow. We had two crows. All the other crows are CG. We had two crows, and I couldn't believe that they actually hit their marks. Unbelievable. <laughs> I thought they, we'd be there all day shooting the crow. And this... This is my... Thing. Oh, did they take out the line about, um, you're not good at it? Yeah. Oh, that was my favourite line. Anything that... I know, I was a little surprised on that I too. Loved I, it, cause I, I loved it, because I loved the idea that it was, he said, I could ga gather the wood if you'd rather, and I just go, you're not good at it. <laughs> and it was, I remember you, you said, know, you were like, yeah. it's, not, it's not like I'm better at it than you, it's just, yeah. you're just awful at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what's interesting, though, um, Hannah, is that I, I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, they took that line out. And then I thought about it, and I thought, you know what, though? It shows um, the evolution of their relationship, that the fact that you don't question that she's picking up the wood and you're holding the baby. Yeah, that's yeah, just it's who so you guys routine. are. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so and then yeah, I went, oh, nice. actually, I kind of like it. <laughs> I, I like scenes like this where you get to play really almost nose to nose with somebody. There's kind of no hiding place. The only place you can really look is in their eyes. And he wouldn't want to look at those eyes. Are you talking about mine? I'm talking about your eyes. Actually, no, I'm right. Well, we're at it. Yeah, I really like how we did this, and you guys are so brilliant in it. 
I mean, just no Samwell's patient as well with her not understanding things. There's never one I second where he appears condescending or impatient or trying to come across as intellectually superior. He yeah. just feels like he's doing her a favour by teaching her these things all the time. But I also love the different kinds of intelligence that you see in the scene, like the way that she says a wink is on purpose. Yeah. Like, it's so simple to her. It's yeah. just like... And, yeah, you, you wouldn't... You haven't thought of that, but actually she's kind of... She's kind of right. Yeah. yeah. She is. She's right. And it, and it shows her intelligence. I completely agree with you. And, you know, I love to... You were saying, John, how, how patient Samwell is... And and then he feels bad when you know when he may have offended her. May have been offended, yeah. Because I I, I think that he can sense another damaged soul, a, a soul equally if not more damaged as him, and he just knows that you've got to treat people like that with kid gloves as he's never been treated. I think he realizes how much he would have appreciated somebody to take a more gentle tack with him in the past. Yes. Maybe that's not Mormon. That's a lovely idea. Moment's a last name. Why and and he, treads, he treads so carefully here, which, yeah. is, which is great. He's on eggshells, because yeah. he yeah. he, she's so emotionally fragile, instance, as I is he. But I think you guys are right that they connect. They're both victims, they both have an ugly past, and they found each other, and they have that connection. Yeah. My father's also a Tali. His name's Samuel Tali, too? No. Do you remember um, what Alex said when we did that? It was I think it was the first time we ever met and we rehearsed for that, the symbol scene oh, in, yeah. in series two. Yeah. And he said it was the most beautiful sort of note I've ever been given. He was like, the two of you are like two birds, each with a broken wing. And when you come together for the first yeah. time, you see the possibility that you could fly. That's amazing. Oh, isn't my it? God. It was yeah. incredible. That is beautiful. So, that was yeah, Alex Graves? So, uh, no, Alex. Oh, wow. um, what is his surname? Sakharov. Alex yeah, Sakharov. Yeah, Alex Sakharov, yeah. Oh, um, that, you know what? That sounds like something Alex Sakharov would say. Yeah, he's, he's that's, so, that's beautiful. such a lovely man, and it was just the most, he's the most beautiful thing, and so true, so, like, such a wonderful way of describing it. That is. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love that. And, you know, I think that, that in this moment coming up... Um, I think Samwell, and, and, and there's been a few times in the series so far where we see that deep down in all this damaged fear, he actually is incredibly brave. Yeah. And, yeah. and when his instincts have to come out, this courageous man comes out. It's only when he's not aware that he's doing it, when it becomes life or death. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I think that once he's forced into making gut reactions to things and he takes his, his head space out of it, I think that he, that's when he, he can become a hero, but he's, he's too savvy to recognise the danger most of the time that he kind of dissuades himself mentally from acting on instinct. But I think, because I think both of them are so incredibly brave, and I think obviously you have these kind of, in the show you have much more kind of traditional heroic characters like Jon Snow or Rob Stark, but you also have these two people, they're so, they have absolutely every reason not to be brave, and actually yeah. they've overcome such hardship and they've been so kind of, strong within they're, they're real real survivors and i think and i think that also kind of i think because gilly has had such i think gilly's a real kind of brings out the bravery in sam partly because she herself has had has absolutely no she's even weaker than him yeah and um and yet kind of just like absolutely the fact that you took the baby and ran after what she's been Stay dealing back. with the, the fact that you would even think of that is so courageous yeah you know, her instinct is to protect her child at, at all costs. You stay back. And I know we were talking before about the initial thought of shooting this in Iceland, but I think these trees play such an amazing part in the suspense of this moment. I think we had much more control shooting it here. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think it worked out really well. It was so amazing spending so much time with Ross in that yeah. full makeup, and you just got so used to it, just became normal. Like that was just who, what he looked like, yeah. and that was who he was. Almost. I mean, poor old This Ro was two days to shoot this sequence. Look at him go! <laughs> go on, son. Do you remember I fell over? Yeah, you did yeah, fall was... over. And also, you falling over 
gave me such a, a bizarre professionalism quandary. Because I thought, am I professional and I just carry on as if it's not happened? Or am I one <laughs> step further professional? I mean, I'd stay in character and go back to help. You carried on, didn't you? I just carried on. <laughs> you kept running, didn't you? I, did, I didn't. In my defence, I didn't notice that you'd fallen no, over. No, no, no. This is the thing, because I was so embarrassed. And apparently I sort of fell out of shot, so no one saw me. Yeah. Where did people think you'd gone? I don't know. Just, I, just, someone said it, they thought I was swallowed up in your cloak. You'd gone back for the dagger. That's what you'd done. Back for the dagger. You guys did such a good job, though, of, of, of that last shot when you ran past either side of the camera because that was not an easy thing to do. I mean, you're running at a moving camera and um, you had to let go at a certain time. I don't know. I was really yeah. impressed that you guys got the timing of that so well. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been so fun talking to you guys. I can't yeah, wait to see, see you again. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm coming back this season and I, uh, I, look, forward to, I look forward to working with you guys. Good. It's and such con- a pleasure. And congratulations on all that. That was just all beginning to end fantastic. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, it's because I get to work with people like you. So thank you very much. Oh, it's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thanks to everybody for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah, Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.